Hi guys, welcome back to Innovation Strategy. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to craft a great deployment strategy, which is really, really important. So let's get started. Remember this great movie? The thing is it's wrong because even if you have an incredible innovation, you have to have a great launch strategy or this could happen. A great deployment strategy for your innovation is going to take into account at least five factors, launch timing, licensing and compatibility, pricing, distribution, and marketing. Let's start with launch timing. First, are there business cycle or seasonal effects to consider? For example, a lot of products see their heaviest sales during the Christmas season, making November and December a prime launch time. This is a chart of the total monthly sales of a bunch of different video game consoles, including different versions of the PlayStation, different versions of the Xbox, the Nintendo Wii U, and the Nintendo Switch. See those big spikes in November and December of every year? That's seasonal effects for you. Another factor to consider is whether you're trying to beat a competitor to market. That could be really important if you're in an industry with strong network externalities or learning curve effects that might lead to one competitor getting locked in as dominant. Sometimes firms delay launching a new product because they're worried it'll cannibalize one of their own previous products. That can be risky though, because if you don't cannibalize your own products, somebody else may do it for you. In the video game industry, competitors have learned to embrace self-cannibalization. Launching generation after generation of new and improved products. Another super important factor in launch timing is whether production capacity and complementary goods and services are in place. After all, if they come, you better have built it. Now let's talk about licensing and compatibility. Do you want your product to be compatible only with your own devices? Or do you want it to be compatible with other devices too? Consider, for example, a company that comes up with a great recipe for plant-based chicken. They could try to meet market demand themselves, or they could license it out to a bunch of other companies to have a broader market reach. Now let's talk about different pricing strategies. We're gonna start with survival pricing. Survival pricing is when you price goods to cover variable costs and some fixed costs. It's a short run strategy. In the long run, a firm needs to create and capture more value. The next pricing strategy is to maximize current profits. To do this, managers estimate costs and demand and then set the price to maximize cash flow or return on investment. This strategy tends to emphasize current performance, but may sacrifice long-term performance. Now let's talk about a maximum market skimming price strategy. In this strategy, managers set initial prices high to signal the market about the quality of the innovation and also to recoup their R&D costs. The downside of this strategy is that it can attract competitors to the market and it can also slow adoption of products. On the other end of the spectrum is the maximum market share pricing strategy. This pricing strategy may also be known as a penetration price, and it's where we see freemium pricing. In this strategy, managers set the price as low as possible to drive up volume, which can drive down production costs and increase the sales of complements. This strategy is risky, and the firm may need to bear substantial initial losses, but it may be worth it if the industry has strong economies of scale or network externalities. You can also manipulate the perception of price by delaying it or spreading it out over time. Look at this ad that says free security system. Get a free home security system worth $850. But look at the fine print. Installation starts at $99 and you're locked into a 36 month monitoring contract. This type of pricing strategy helps make the hardware costs feel more affordable to people. Okay, and we're already up to distribution now. Some of the main options for distribution include selling direct, using manufacturer's representatives, or working with wholesalers and retailers. When you sell direct, you have more control over the customer experience and you keep more of the profit. 
However, selling through wholesalers or retailers can give you much broader market reach and can more easily enable customers to see and try your product before buying it. Last but not least is marketing. Marketing is very important to a great deployment strategy. Marketing includes advertising, promotions, publicity, and public relations. We're going to focus on advertising. There are a lot of different channels for advertising, including online ads, magazine ads, radio ads, television ads, direct mail, and billboards. Each has different strengths and weaknesses in terms of the breadth of the market it can reach, the degree to which it can be selective, and the type of content it's suited for. Ask yourself two main questions. The first one is what is the right medium? Consider the audience reach, the ability to include technical content, and the ability to target and customize. Then ask yourself, what is the right message? Are potential adopters looking for data, style, emotional connection, or are they looking for reassurance that the product is safe or ubiquitous? That's a wrap. We've covered the five main factors of a great deployment strategy, launch timing, pricing, licensing and compatibility, distribution, and marketing. If you build it and deploy it really, really well, they will come. <laughs>